Hello everybody, welcome to episode 151, you've stuck with it. After my landmark last week, you're joining me here and I think rainy season's decided to come, it's decided to go, it's decided to come, it's decided to go. We do nobody knows where they are. Today it's sunny. Now, them of you watching on YouTube might notice that I am sweating. I am sweating. Now, well, let me give you the reason what sacrifices I go to to get one of these out every week. So it's red hot here in Japan. I can either close the windows and then it's a sauna in here. I can close the windows and put the air conditioning on. It's then you're getting the noise from the air conditioner and the fan. I am too tight to be forking out for air conditioners and silent fans because I ain't got any money. And if I had, there's much more important things that I want to spend it on. For example, a belt drive crank for my bicycle. Much more important. Or I could just leave the windows open and let a slight breeze come through. I will still sweat, but I won't sweat as much and I won't sweat as quick. So I've gone with the third option. Now, the third option means because there's an American base just a train station away, you do get a lot of American helicopters and planes flying over probably just as soon as I hit record button on this episode. I've just, I'm on take three now, because as soon as I pressed the button, one came over, another came over. The second one decided to have a bit of a fucking hover. And now they've gone, and it's silence. Have we got birds on? Little bit, little bit. I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, talking about Americans, uh, midweek we had the presidential debate. On one side of the aisle, you've got a fat billionaire that's had it all handed to him, who seems to be all right upstairs, but physically, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd beat him in a race any day of the week. And on the other side, you've just got a fellow that can't string a fucking sentence together. So it's a bit of a rock and a hard place. Now, I, I watched the highlights. I don't know if you can call them highlights, but... If we start with what America's putting up to offer. Now, are these your best, America? Are these your best? Now, I'm coming from it from the point of view of, of uh, somebody from UK. Uh, my country is having an election on the 7th. The 7th? Yeah, the 7th of the 4th. One of them two days. That's how much of a shit I give. And on one side, you've got this fella of Indian descent who the racists despise, but who is very racist towards people that want to get into the country. So the racists are thinking, we like what he's doing, but we don't like him. And then you've got Sir Keir Starmer, who's on the other side, who it does sound like he's just saying stuff that he doesn't think he's going to do in future. So that's our best. Now, if we were to put our best up against America's best, I think they would snap our hands off. They really would. And ours aren't that good. But I think they would. But we're not talking about my country. We're talking about America. Now, you've got... A fella who is 81 years old. If he gets back in, he'll be 85 when he's done. Now, four years ago, when Biden went for this um, and he was doing his presidential debates, they put a side by side with it. And there has been significant decline. It looks different. He's, at, he's definitely had a facelift. But if you look at his face... It looks like a fucking ball bag. I was looking at his face thinking, what's happened to him? The f when people have a facelift, it sort of pulls everything back like this. And you can't shut your eyes or your mouth. But is it looks like he's had a facelift, but it's snapped. And everything's shot forward. And he's in that kind of phase where your face has snapped forward and it's about to settle itself again, but it's still in that forward motion. And if you look, it does look like 
your ball bag when you're having a piss outside in winter. It's scrunched up like a fucking prune stone. Now, you add together with the fact that I would say 80% of the time is having bother finishing a sentence. And that's your blue side of the aisle. And then you've got Trump piling in. Now, there's a lot of people that don't like Trump. And he's like Marmite or Vegemite, if you're listening in Australia. You either do or you don't. And I think he's now coming into that territory of, well, I can put up with it because there's a fella there that looks like he's going to shit himself at any moment. I remember being away. Now, being away from home for three years. Now, when Trump were in office, you saw him on TV every day. And they didn't put the translator up for Trump. You listened to it in English on Japanese TV and you knew what he was saying. So you were hearing Trump every day on Japanese TV and that were coming through internet. You were hearing him every day and you were getting fucking sick of it. So when you see somebody every day, you don't really notice the decline. And I don't think there has been any. There'd have been some because it's, it's six years since. It's uh, it'd be eight years since he first got in his presidency. So there will have been some decline. But when you're seeing somebody every day, you don't see it. Now, Biden, once in a blue moon, you're seeing him on TV. And I'm not actively searching to look for him because why would I? So when the last time I would have really listened to Biden would have been about four years ago. And then when I saw him for the first time on Wednesday, on uh, Wednesday, Sunday, Fucking hell, look at me. I'm doing a Biden now. I can't remember what fucking day it was. I saw him. But when I saw him, you're thinking, Jesus Christ, why isn't anybody putting a fence up around this fella and saying, look, let's get somebody else in. Let's get somebody else in. Why is nobody saying, look, granddad, get yourself off to the beach, go find yourself a villa in Thailand and let some beautiful hookers suck on your plums until they walk you into the grave. Because if I were as rich and powerful as Joe is, at 81 year old, I'm losing my mind. That is exactly what I would do if I weren't married. I like to add that as a caveat. But that's what I'd be doing. But I think if you're so desperate to hold on to power, or when you're that old, grasp onto it. You don't want to leave it alone. You're that desperate for it. Is going nowhere. And I think it was the worst thing he could have possibly done with doing that debate. Now, is it? could it be that if he's in long enough, he'll be able to pardon his son? Now, everybody's saying Joe is a nice fella, but you've got to look at you've got to look at the people's kids, I think. Now, I don't think my kids are knobheads. But if my kids turn out to be knobheads, I have to say that's my fault. If your kids are knobheads, it's your fault. Now, Trump's kids, as silver-spooned as they are, they don't appear to be knobheads. That's my opinion. I don't know them. But what you see on telly, you don't see them on telly falling out of a club arms full of slappers they don't seem to be involved in any scandal i think his daughter once said you know if you're feeling if you're feeling really stressed out just have a massage thinking that everybody in america can afford a massage i think that's the one thing that picked her up on so his kids seem all right they seem to have been raised all right now biden's kids i mean that's a fucking life that hunter's had and he's still having I mean, I think he's a, a year or two older than me, but he is he were banging hookers like they were going out of fashion, smoking meth, smoking crack, driving at like 200 kilometers an hour to Vegas with hookers in the car, um, leaving laptops all over the place so people can find him and, and see where he's got on him. Joe's sending him to Ukraine. He's coming back with cases, millions and millions of dollars in suitcases and backhanders the way he's making his money is is an artist and i'm 
I want to do the inverted commas fingers thing, but I also don't want to look like a knobhead. So he's an artist and his works of art are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if that is not fucking money laundering of the highest order, I don't know what is. And if you look at some of his prints, as the, a, a great man I know, my dad, when he walked into a Hockney exhibition in Bradford, you know, I look at Hunter Biden's works of art and I think to myself, I could do better than that. But these pieces are going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, you can buy them anonymously, so nobody knows who's buying them. It could be these Ukrainian oligarchs. You know, it could be these American businessmen that just want to get a bit of money into Joe's back, back bin so they can give them favourable tax rates. We don't know. But how can a meth-smoking, crack-smoking, prostitute-banging, gun-buying while addicted on crack felon sell his art for hundreds of thousands of dollars is he just selling it for that much because he's the president's son really is that why he's getting all that money and you know it doesn't joe doesn't appear to have raised his kids very well and i mean one of them tapped out with brain cancer he were fucking stood over the amount of shit he must have fired at afghanis and iraqis in them two wars I think it got to him, he ended up with a brain tumour and he, he tapped out and died. And I think another couple of his kids died in a car crash with his first wife. So Joe seemed to have just thrown himself into his job and left all done to, to look after himself. And when you're leaving a kid to look after himself, if he's got money to burn, where are the hookers, where are the drugs? Because I know that's what I would have done if I'd have been left a an allowance like that i would have been fucking balls deep nostril deep in it all in it all and he has he's doing what i would have done now the thing about joe having a go at trump saying you've got the morals of an alley cat well maybe trump has but is banging a porn star are your morals in the in the gutter if you bang a porn star while your wife's pregnant at home, mm, it's not the best thing you can do. But he's still denying it. He's still denying it. Now, that is a terrible thing to do. But why Trump didn't go for the jugular and bang on about Joe's son? I mean, Hunter waited for his brother to die of a brain tumour and then started slinging a mix in with his sister-in-law. Now, I am i don't have any brothers or sisters. But if, if one of my children, God forbid, dies before me, and then the other child starts throwing it in with their spouse, I would have to say, look here, what are you doing? What are you doing? And you'd have a word. But Joe's too busy being a glamour boy for Obama. He's just let it slide. I'm sure if you were the vice president of the United States of America and your son is shagging his sister-in-law, your daughter-in-law, you would, you know, eke out five minutes of your schedule one day, even Tuesday afternoon, and just get on phone or go face to face and say, the fucking hell are you playing at, Hunter? What are you playing at? Get your dick out of your sister-in-law and sort your fucking life out. But I suppose they were chained to the pipe too much. And that's what it is. That's the state of American politics. You've either you've got the choice between a fella that bangs porn stars while his wife's pregnant or a fella who's raised a kid who's been banging his sister-in-law once his brother had died. Make your choices. Make your fucking choices. Yep. And that, the new episode of America will be out at the start of November. And we'll see what all that leads to.
Now, the second thing I want to talk about today is me getting up at stupid o'clock. And thank God it's only going to be for another two weeks. Like I said last week, don't get your hopes up as far as England's concerned. And, you know, they, were, they played Slovakia last night, not last night, two nights ago. Played Slovakia two nights ago. Now, for them, if you're not in the know, I know a lot of, I get a lot of downloads in Australia and New Zealand and a lot in, in the UK. But them of you not watching or them of you not interested in football, the proper game of football when I say that, not the stuff, the balls that you throw around in America. <clears throat> Real football, played on the grass with your feet. That's why they call it football. Foot ball it's a compound noun you put them both together football it's a ball you kick with your foot now european championships like in the last episode don't get your hopes up don't get your hopes up and i got up at i went to bed at nine i got up again at quarter one i put my ipad on at side of my bed and i watched 94 minutes of fucking garbage so this is england's fourth game and it's the last no it's the no it's not even quarter finals it's the one before the quarter finals i've no idea what this is the elimination round they're all elimination rounds now england played slovakia and went one nil down and we could not fucking string a pass together it'd have been better having me on pitch to be honest it would have been better having me on pitch couldn't string a pass together and then Kyle Walker slings a corner in, gets headed on, and Jude Bellingham, overhead kick, 94th minute, bottom right-hand corner. It goes to extra time. First minute of extra time, Harry Kane scores, and then they hold on for a 2-1, and they've got through, but they were rubbish. Every game they've played has been shite. Now, England always start shite. They never do well. <clears throat> and then they start coming good, but they've not started coming good. They are remaining shite. And it, the only reason we're getting through is because we're playing low-quality teams. Serbia, Denmark, Slovenia, uh, Slovakia. These are not world-beating teams. And I think if they don't get the fucking finger out soon, there is going to be a fucking car crash if we meet one of these big teams. A bit like when Brazil was sort of stuttering through and then they got Germany in World Cup and it was 7-1. Fucking embarrassing. I think if we do not get our finger out, it's going to be like that. Now we've got Switzerland next and you think, ah, oh, Switzerland, no problem. But they've been good. They've been good. Like Austria. Fucking Austria. I wouldn't want to play Austria. And it's Austria. You think, oh, Austria, we're, we're, in, we're in easy side. Now, if you look over the other side, Belgium, France, uh, Spain, there's only Spain out of those teams that I've just mentioned that I would worry about. I mean, Belgium got knocked out last night by, Spain, by France, and France only got through because of an own goal. They've, they've only scored one goal in the sole tournament, and it were an Mbappe penalty. The other... Goals have been own goals. So I think we're in the difficult side of the group. Now we've got Switzerland. There's Austria and Turkey tomorrow morning, which is going to be a load of fun. I can't, but that's the game I've been looking forward to. Now Austria and Switzerland have been the best teams our side of the group. And in our side of the group, there's us and, it, and Holland. And Holland only got through because they were third. So, if we beat, let me think, if we beat Switzerland, we then play Holland or la 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 la, somebody else. I forget who, but if you're watching on YouTube, the flag will be right there. And then if, if, we, beat, if we beat Switzerland and then we get Holland, we beat them. And then we'll get somebody good. But if we just stutter through and, I don't know, just fucking by hook or by crook get to the final, 
and then we play somebody like Spain, I don't want to be fucking strung up like that by Spain. I would rather go out now than get embarrassed like that. But I don't know. I don't know if it's worth getting up anymore. I'm not sure. Switzerland, I think, is Sunday morning or Monday morning at four o'clock. And I'm going to be up anyway. So, I don't know. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting the 2010 vibe. I was living in Spain in 2010. We stuttered through that group. Fucking awful group. And then we got Germany, and Germany fucked us up. Even though we got that goal disallowed that Lampard scored that were well over at line, we were rubbish. We were rubbish. And then you had um, 2014 group stages, 2016 lose to Iceland. I've told you, told you all this in the last episode. But yeah, it is worrying. France, France went through... Uh, Portugal scraped through this morning on a penalty shootout and then this tonight's games and then we're back into the next round come Friday, Saturday so I am starting to sweat profusely now you can see it on my brow I'm going to switch this off I'm going to end the podcast and I'm going to switch the air conditioning on so again, it's a short one because I'm sweating so I will speak to you Next time I speak to you, England will probably be out and I can give you the I told you so. Or England will still be in. They'll scrape through against Switzerland and I'll be saying, don't get your fucking hopes up. So you can sort of gauge what the next episode is going to be like. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. 151. You fucking believe that? 151. Three times better, motherfuckers. Three times better. So I will see you next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Adios, let's switch them air conditioners on.